During this chapter, there's a lot of vocab that you're going to need to know. So I would spend some time right now in your notes writing down some definitions of all of these terms because I'm going to be spending a lot of time explaining these terms, but I'm going to be using these terms on the next slide and you guys need to really understand what they are. Okay, this section really talks a lot about the vocabulary of circles, and that's why I had you guys write some of those definitions down. So what term best describes each of the following? HB. HB is a segment that goes through the center, so that's a diameter. Line AF. Line AF passes through two points on our circle, but extends outside the circle, so that's going to be a secant. Segment BE just goes through the circle, but does it extend technically outside, because I'm just talking about segment BE, so that is what we call a chord. Line DG hits at one point, so that is called a tangent. CB, CB, CB goes from the center to a point on the circle, so that's a radius. Point C is the center of our circle. This symbol means circle C. And E is a point where our tangent hits, so that's a point of tangency. Some other things that you guys need to understand inscribed polygons. Okay, an inscribed polygon is a polygon where all four vertices are on our circle. So these are each what we call inscribed polygons. So we have a quadrilateral over here and a, and a triangle over here. These circles are what we call circumscribed circles. The circles are outside of the polygon. Concentric circles, I have the target symbol there. Okay, It's a bunch of circles that have the same center but different radii. There I have one circle. There, this circle here shares that common center but has a different radii. Radius length. Here, our third one, another circle, that same center, but different radii lengths. So some examples having to do with this concept. We have two congruent circles with radii 10, each passing through the center of the other. That's important, passing through the center of the other. Find the length of the common chord. So I have one circle, and I always draw these incorrectly, with a center, and my other one passes through the center of that circle. So each one of these points right here are our centers of our circle. I need to find the length of this common chord. Well, let's look at this. From our center to a point on our circle, which is, I'm going to call it point A, and then I'm going to pull this one down here, B, that's going to be 10 units. Because our circles each have a radii of 10. So from our center to a point on the circle is 10. So let's look at that. We have a rhombus here. Where this is 10, this is 10, this is 10, this is 10. I'm looking for this common chord, AB. Let's talk about what this length is. From one center of one circle to the center of another circle. Well, it's going to be 10 units because our radius is 10. 
So what we have here, and I'll try and highlight it, it might be hard for you guys to see, but this is an equilateral triangle. And we know the diagonals of, equal, of rhombuses are perpendicular, so this is 5, this is 5. If this is an equilateral triangle, this is 60. We bisect that angle, so that's 30. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so we have 10, 5, 5 root 3 on each side for a total length of our common chord being 10 root 3. Okay, this other, this next example, and this is always a fan favorite of Mrs. Marnell. Um, we have circle P and circle Q each having a radii of 10 and 17. So P is going to have a radius of 10, and Q, because it's listed second, is going to have a radius of 17. And PQ is 21. Find the length of common chord AB. So I have from P up to A, that is 10, and P down to B is also 10, because that's the radius of that circle. Going from point Q to A, that is 17. And then the common chord is 21. Let's get an expanded picture of that. And I kind of, I'm going to make it look a little bit nicer for us. So put point A, point B. This is point P, where each one of those is 10. And then over here we have point Q. Where those are each 17. And I know that this whole segment PQ is 21. I need to find the length of segment AB. Okay. Well, it's a kite, so we do our diagonals are perpendicular. And we know because it is a kite that one diagonal, diagonal PQ, bisects diagonal AB. The trick on this one is make this part of one of your diagonals X, make the other part of the other diagonal Y, and set up a system of equations. So X squared plus Y squared is equal to 100. Because I have a right triangle in here. And then on the other side, we know this is 21 minus X because the whole segment PQ is 21. So set up your Pythagorean theorem using this other, th other side. So 17 squared is equal to Y squared plus 21 minus X squared. So now 17 squared is 289. Y squared, let's just leave it as Y squared. Let's FOIL this all out. So when I FOIL that all out, it's not just um, 441 plus X squared. You have to do FOIL. So we get 441, you have a middle term of 42X plus X squared. Now I'm going to do kind of a funky substitution here. X squared plus Y squared is 100. So X squared plus Y squared that's 100. Solving for x. So I'm going to subtract the 100 and the 441 over. I get negative 252 is equal to a negative 42x. x ends up equaling 6. So remember, I'm not just looking for x. I'm looking for the whole length of this. So if x is 6, if x is 6, I get 36 plus y squared is equal to 100. Solving for y, we get 8. Or you could have recognized that it's a version of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And so that means y, part of our diagonal, or part of ab, is 8. 
the other part is also eight, because remember in a kite, one set of diagonals bisects the other one. So segment AB is 16 units long. Okay, there are your lesson questions. Just giving you guys some vocab. Please make sure your lesson summary is submitted on time.